Hello everyone, it is Minerata African Hair God, and hopefully this will be my last take doing this video. This is going to be a long video, I know y'all can see it, so just, you know, go ahead and prepare yourself. But hey, look, it's actually an edited video. Like, it's an edited video. I know, I know, give me the round of applause. No, that's not something we do on here too often anymore. But I did feel inspired to come on and talk about the mathematics of hair, specifically natural hair. Um, and this video was inspired after watching <clears throat> Miss Waldia Bynes. And we were on Patreon. Shout out to the Patreon. If you would like to join, uh, check that link in the description. Okay. All right. Um, we was doing a watch party and watching Miss Waldia Bynes and her video, 4C Hair Damage, How to Repair Natural Hair. And in this video, she had taken out a protective style and she was assessing the state and health and condition of her hair. When she was assessing her hair, I noticed she was misevaluating the condition of her hair quite drastically. Her interpretation of her hair was that it was dramatically damaged, um, a lot of thinning, a lot of breakage, and a lot of it was because she was looking at her hair in a blown out state. And I noticed that she has um, finer strands of hair and she doesn't have thick density, but she has probably about low to medium, somewhere closer to medium uh, density of hair. So when you are examining fine hair in a blown out state, there's things that you have to consider. One of the things is that fine hair is very small and thin in width. So that means that it doesn't take up a lot of space. So there's a lot more gaps in between the strand, especially when you straighten it out. Now I am going to use, I'm, I'm gonna to attempt to use this notebook situation as an example. So I want you to, to imagine these strand, these sheets of paper as being individual strands of hair. We know that when hair is blown out and silked out with a flat iron, it lays all smooth, it's consistent, the strands lay flat on top of each other. And a lot of times, a lot of people with fine hair will notice that their hair tends to look more voluminous and it tends to look um, thicker in its natural state than when they go and blow it out or flat iron it. And this is the reason why. So again, natural hair, straightened, blown out. Look how much space this is taking up. I can literally hold this in one hand and yeah, well, barely. Now, let's take one strand of hair. We got one strand of hair, okay? And let's say you're like, I don't want to be a straight natural anymore. I love my curls. I love my 4C hair. So what do you do? You get your spray bottle and you wet it and you wash your hair and you like, give me my curls back for this one strand of hair. So what does your hair do? It goes from being this limp, straight hair to into this shrunken, three-dimensional curl. Now, again, let's, that's just one strand, right? Let's take another one. Let's shrink that up too. Okay, let's, why stop there, bitch? <laughs> why stop there? Let's get a third one. Get some water, and, you know, get, the, get that shrinkage. Y'all know y'all love saying how disrespectful shrinkage is. All right, so now we have four strands of hair, of natural hair, of curls, of curl patterns. This kind of resembles an afro. It's very inconsistent. It's not smooth, you know? And when it was in the notebook and it was all straightened, it just, it flowed better. Now it's just, it's just this, this mass, this mass of strands. And that's because curls, natural curls, curl patterns, whether it's waves, S curls, curls, coils, or lack of curl pattern at all, they 
take up a three-dimensional space. They have both length, they have height, and they have width. When you are talking about just straight strands of hair, they're all of the, all it is is just height and length. That's it. There's no width to it because it's 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 just straight. It's it's literally you got one strand of straight hair and then you got your curls. Which takes up more space? Probably this. This doesn't I can I can put my arms and it's almost like it's non-existent. It's it's not taking up anything. But this same sheet of paper, when it's drawn up, fills in and takes up more space. And it it takes up even more space when it's combined with other strands of hair that's just like it. So that ties into our discussion of hair as it relates to math and volume and body. So again, curls, three-dimensional, straight hair, two-dimensional. Two-dimensional, length and width, doesn't take as much space, you see more gaps. And so that's when I felt bad because I saw her assessing her hair and she saw she was looking at it and it was she was seeing through the strands but i was like it's only because your strands are fine and you didn't gather the same amount of hair that you did at the top as you did with the bottom so now it looks thinner at the bottom than it does at the top and now you're thinking like you need a drastic haircut and the whole time i'm like no your hair is fine it's okay like the most you probably need is a trim and i don't like to assess people's hair um just through a video because I prefer it um, to do it in person so I can really examine to see if split ends, fairy knots, things of that sort. But from what I saw, as far as the health and state of her hair, she really didn't need a drastic cut the way that she thought she did. And I, I felt so bad for her. I was like, let me, let me go and leave this comment. So I'll go and type up this long, lengthy comment and I post it. At least I thought I posted it, but then I go back under the video and I don't, see it i'm like where does the comment at i don't even see the comment anymore i don't know if she deleted it or if youtube was like fuck it i i'm just not gonna post your comment it seems she went and got her her hair rectified and she went to a stylist and i didn't go see that video uh i am gonna probably go watch that video after this and i can almost guarantee you that the stylist probably just gave her a light trim it was it probably didn't need to be anything dressed the way that she was saying. Anyways, math is it, as it relates to volume and body. So a lot of times when we talk about hair, we talk about the volume. We want voluminous hair. And a lot of times people mean that they want big hair, they want fuller hair, they want their hair to take up more space. Um, so before we break that down, let's actually find the definition of volume. Volume is the space that a substance or shape occupies or contains. So again, when we are examining straight hair, we see that it takes up less volume than natural curls. Natural curls are naturally going to take up more more space. This this is almost 70 sheets of paper. This is just three strands of hair. Imagine if all of this was crumpled up like like these other strands. Imagine how much volume that would take up. So when we when we're saying volume, what we're really saying is we want our hair to take up more space. For instance, if we were to do a perm rod set, and we want our hair to have more volume, would you do smaller perm rods or would you do larger perm rods? It depends on the look and the style and the aesthetic that you're going for. But if you're going for, if your main focus is for maximum volume, you're going to get the larger perm rods because it's going to create larger curls that are going to take up more space. Okay. Now, what if you decide to get the smaller perm rods and because you like how the tighter curls look, but you still want to have some volume. Well, you could have a little bit of volume, not as much as if you did a larger perm rod set, but what you're really looking for is to have those tighter curls with more body, okay? So I, when we say body, 
I want you to think about mass. So let's look at the, de first let's look at the definition of body. Body is a large or substantial amount of something, a mass or collection of something, a mass. Keyword, operative word is mass. So what exactly is mass and how does it differ from volume? Glad you ask. Um, one can consider the mass of an object as the measure of how much physical stuff makes up that object. The thing about curls is that while they are three-dimensional and they do take up space, there's empty space in between the curls, in, between, in the inside, in the interior of the curl, and around the curl. Let's look up the formula for mass, since we're trying to get body, right? Let's look up the formula for mass. The formula for mass as it relates to density and volume is mass equals density times volume. So just knowing that density times volume, there are certain people who have denser or thicker hair, meaning that they have more strands on their heads, more strands, more curls. So for those people, their hair will naturally be more massive than say somebody with thinner density and the same size curl. Let's think about a wash and go versus an Afro. Um, we know that wash and goes can be voluminous, but wash and goes don't tend to have as much body as say an Afro. When you do a wash and go, what do you do? You wet your hair, you take your gel, your foam, whatever styling product you use, and you you coat and you slather your hair and you get it to texturize into a nice defined ringlet, curl pattern, definition, whatever. Now, once the hair dries, a lot of the time, excuse me, a lot of the times you don't have that initial volume because you've been directing your hair down. So... What we'll end up doing is we'll end up fluffing our hair, leaving our head upside down. Um, some people like to go in with a pick and lift it up. Um, somebody's gonna say, well, some people like to use a blow dryer. Not necessarily the same because with the blow dryer, you're just kind of stretching and getting more length, but you don't really get more volume out of it. The volume comes from separation. So when you go in and you pick, you're actually separating and expanding the roots of the hair so that the curls can sit on top of it and fall off or fall over. So when we're talking about separating, think about how the curls in a wash and go are formed. You have a clump of strands that are gathered together and define in this consistent curl pattern all throughout your head. All these little ringlets are these clusters of hair strands put together to create this uniform curl definition or shape. So when you go in and you begin to separate it, what happens? Your hair expands and it gets fuller. Let's say I do a braid out, right? And I think I have a video of this, so hopefully... I'm talking in the video is kind of showing the whole demonstration. So I do a braid out, but I'm doing this braid out to do a, uh, a Afro, right? So I go, I set my hair in, in the three, the, the plaits, the braids, wake up and I go and take down the braids. The definition is nice. You know, if I, if I fluff this and separate it meticulously, I can have a, a cute little braid out, you know, it would be nice it wouldn't have as much mass to it, um, but it would have some decent volume. However, with an Afro, an Afro is nothing more than curls that are minutely separated. So anybody with a curl pattern can have an Afro. And it's when you take each of those individual curls, each of these individual sheets of paper, and you separate and you 
separate and you separate and you get it, it expands and it gets bigger and bigger and bigger the more that you separate each of those ringlets into its own individual curl. So that's what I'm going to do for my afro. I'm going to take this braid out and I'm just going to pinch off little pieces, like really, really small pieces until the hair expands so much you don't even see the definition anymore because all you see is a mass of hair. You just see all of these strands taking up and filling up all of this space, not just taking up space, but filling it up as well. That is body. When we talk about mass, we're talking about body. And that is volume. Those are the concepts of volume and body as it relates to hair, specifically natural hair. Now, probably didn't explain this the best way possible, but hopefully you got the concept of it. Now, voluminous hair and hair that's full of body is going to look different on everybody. There's not any one way that volume and body looks on each individual person because our hair is different. This is something that hairstylists always have to consider when they are working with natural hair because the first thing I think about is the canvas that I'm working with. What's your density? What's your strand texture? Um, and what is the look that you're going for? A lot of people will come in with a picture and they'll say, I love how these two strand twists look. Can I get this same style? And I'll look at that person's hair. Their density will be different. Their, um, their curl pattern is different. So the way that their hair will expand and separate when doing two strand twists is going to be different from somebody with a tighter curl pattern. It's not going to expand as much. That means the twists are going to look different. The twists are going to look a bit more constricted than somebody with a looser curl pattern. So I have to consider this and I have to explain this in a way that my clients understand that you can get two strand twists, but your twist may not look exactly like this person here. Your hair doesn't have the same behavior as this person here. And that's because your hair is X, Y, and Z and it behaves X, Y, and Z. Does that make sense? So this is something that, like I said, we as cosmetologists have to think about and have to consider all the time, but it's something that we don't talk about much on here. Um, you know, um, science is cool and all, but a lot of the times the science goes above our heads so much that it it don't even it don't even matter and it don't even make a difference. That's why I don't really focus on hair products on this channel because to be perfectly honest with you, you give me any hair product and give me a client and I can make it look good on anybody. It don't matter what product it is. Oh yeah, it might be drying, it might it might flake up after the fact. I can make it look good. It, it ain't the products. Products do help, but when we're talking about maintaining the health and condition of someone's hair, it's more so a matter of technique and a matter of methodology and a matter of understanding, understanding your hair, understanding hair in general, understanding hair's behavior, understanding your hair's behavior. And that's why I'm more about hair care and less about products. Anyways, I'm rambling now. I'm rambling out. Let me get out of here because I need to go skate. Uh, y'all see I'm dressed to go skate. Um, hopefully that makes sense. If y'all have any questions, I'm sure you will. If y'all have any questions, leave them in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching. And I will see y'all on the next watch party. Until then, be blessed. Bye.